Uh, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, good and blessed morning to you all in the uh, authority of Christ Jesus, our second coming Lord and the Savior. Uh, just one thing about uh, this new uh, mutation of a COVID-19 virus called Omicron. Now, uh, may the Lord's protecting hand be upon all of you from this newly uh, mutated uh, version of uh, COVID-19 virus, Omicron, which he, I believe started from uh, South Africa. All right. Uh, today, we're gonna meditate on our uh, gospel uh, from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through uh, 36. Our title of meditation this morning is Be Alert at All Times. Be Alert at All Times. Today's look and passage is talking about the second coming, the second coming of Christ our Lord and the Savior, along with his earthly and universal signs. As we meditate, on this uh, uh, critical theme of the final events of the world and of humanity, uh, all the flowers, all the followers of Christ need, know, need to know a significant truth that we humanity live in between times of the first and the second, the first and the second coming of Christ, uh, Jesus, who is the Alpha, and Omega, the beginning and the end of our humankind and universe. This second coming of Jesus Christ is likely the very Omega point, end point of all humanity and this present uh, universe created by our Judeo-Christian capital G God. Therefore, our uh, present age is the so-called end time, the eschatological time in our biblical and theological perspective. Regarding this view of the alpha and omega point of our time, humanity, and universe, John the gospel writer likely proclaims in his gospel chapter one, verses one through uh, three, let me quote, in the beginning was the word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being, unquote. Likewise, our Judeo-Christian and even uh, Islam's point of view included it. This our Judeo-Christian uh, viewpoint of time and of, of our human history is the very uh, linear, linear view unlike of the Eastern philosophy and religions like the Hinduism, Buddhism and Taoism and Jainism, etc and also the Stoic, uh, Stoicism in the Greco-Roman uh, world from roughly from fourth uh, century uh, BCE until the uh, third century <clears throat> AD, the, which is a cyclical view. <clears throat> Needless to say, look in this passage, this event, Sunday morning likely proclaims such omega point, the end point of our human history in this Christ Jesus is the second coming into our human realm, our real life setting, day-to-day -day life setting and history along with his critical warning, with his critical warning to us all humanity on earth, that is, our sanctified lifestyle in order to be united with this second coming Christ, our savior and Lord of judgment. 
Now look clarifies such a sanctified lifestyle of ours, that is, our God's kingdom lifestyle. In verses 34 through 36, proclaiming, let me quote, be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with the dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the son of man, unquote. What then is the meaning of being alert at all times as we are waiting for the second coming Christ, our Lord? What then should we live day to day until the very moment of our omega point of earthly journey? in order to firmly stand before this coming Christ, before this second coming Christ. Christ, our Lord, had already answered his question throughout his public ministry of crucifixion and resurrection. He had already taught us by having summarized the then whole scripture, the Hebrew Bible, our Old Testament, into this one line saying, love your Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbors as yourself. That is the very God's kingdom lifestyle and ethics. Our lifestyle of sanctification, in other words, for us, the followers of Christ, in order to be united with this Christ to come again. This is what Luke meant when he proclaimed to us humanity on earth, be alert. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all the things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Our spiritual father, John Wesley, also likely taught us the people called the Methodist such lifestyle of loving our Lord God and loving our fellow humans as ourselves through his teaching of the so-called Christian perfection, which means in Wesley's concept, entire sanctification. That is the very highest and ultimate goal of the people called Methodist as they are waiting for the Lord Christ Jesus to come again. Of course, here, uh, Wesley meant by this, you know, theological concept, Christian perfection. He didn't mean that absolute, angelic, sinless perfection. He meant our highest point of loving our God, our Lord God, and loving our fellow human beings from the bottom of our hearts. Reverend Thomas G. Long writes, Righteous, let me quote, righteousness is not a sweet virtue that everybody in the world desires. Those who take advantage of others for their own gain do not want the world to be fair and just. Those who benefit from the weakness of others 
Do not want the world to be compassionate. Much money and power are invested in maintaining injustice. In maintaining injustice. If, if every uh, wage were fair, if every person were honored as a child of God, if every human being were safe from exploitation, many would lose their grip on status, self gratification, and affluence. Unquote. Matthew, the gospel writer, Matthew and gospel writer, Matthew in his gospel, chapter 25, verses 37 through 40, likely presents the very criteria of Christ Jesus' last judgment of us human beings at his second coming. Let me quote. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king, the king, our second coming Christ, will answer them. Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Let me repeat that uh, sentence again. Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. My brothers and sisters, I believe you know who is the member of God's family. Who is the member of God's family? All humanity on the face of the earth who were created in the image and likeness of God. So this is who is a member of God's family, our brothers and sisters. That's why you have to love your Lord. We have to love our Lord and we have to love our neighboring human fellows. Therefore, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, our second coming Lord, let us be alert at all times. Amen. May the Lord's never ending blessings and grace be upon all of you and be upon each and every single human soul living on the whole face of the earth now and always. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat>